Codeine cough syrup is causing a plague of addiction across Nigeria. This thing is a serious issue. It is biting everybody. It is going from one home to another. If you think you are safe, you are not safe. Those hooked risk organ failure and even descent into madness. He's shouting. He's screaming. He's still, in, he's still in withdrawal syndrome now. He's still having his withdrawal issue now. Addicts are being clapped in chains because syrup has turned them into thugs. I don't want you to get close to This is what cough syrup does. Yeah. I don't think I'll ever get used to this. I weep for this nation because they don't even know what they're doing. They don't even know what they are taking. Africa Eye goes undercover, exposing the crooks and professionals putting industrial quantities of syrup on Nigeria streets. We will take you into a criminal underworld where pharmaceutical company managers act like drug barons. We join crack anti-drug squads putting their lives on the line to smash syrup cartels. This is the front line against the war on syrup. This is unbelievable. And we ask, is the government doing enough to stop the people behind this? These drugs are not coming from the moon. They're not coming from under the sea. They are manufactured somewhere. They're transported from one place to the other. Are we saying that we don't know? Come on. People all over the world are addicted to cough syrup with codeine. It's a medicine that has become a street drug. A sweet, sweet strawberry taste that makes you high and hooks you. Over time, it will kill you. I can search my Facebook page and find hundreds of videos of people getting high. It's in America, it's in South Africa, it's in my country, Nigeria. In just two states, the government says three million bottles are consumed every single day. A lot of these people have no idea what they're getting into. They have no idea that as much as it's a recreational hip thing, cough syrup is very addictive and it will take them to places they do not want to go. It's so bad, our government is sending armies of drug agents to destroy syrup. They raid our cities in the dead of night. Sir. Sir, the National Drug Law and Enforcement Agency, or NDLEA, are out on the streets every week in northern Nigeria. Squads of agents ready to take on heavily armed drug gangs. Tonight, they are not looking for heroin or crack cocaine. They are looking for codeine cough syrup. As the NDLA trucks pulled up, people scattered and hid. The SWAT team storms CD hotels looking for dealers and users. Officers told us men take women to these hotels for sex, often drugging them first with a codeine cough syrup cocktail. Mixed with Coca-Cola, the women get high and vulnerable to rape. Everywhere is being searched, even coke bottles. 
bottles are being sniffed. In one room, we found two men having sex with a young woman while two other men watched. Dress up, dress up. Dress up, dress up. The agents found an empty bottle of Violin Codeine cough syrup hidden in the roof. Call this bottle, please. It's Violin. This is the front line against the war on syrup. This is how serious taking codeine is. It's unbelievable. More than 20 people were arrested. Huge amounts of taxpayers' money is being spent on fighting codeine cough syrup. But we are not winning this war. The criminals are too smart and too many. So the syrup keeps on flowing. It's not hard to find Nigeria's boys getting their syrup high. First, you won't get them. How are to get them? How easy, How easy to get them? Ah, it's very easy. The more we like it, the more we get it. Even now, if you like, it's easy for me to put it for you. It's not hard to find Nigeria syrup girls either. Even religious women drink it. Campaigners who want codeine syrup banned believe the scale of this problem is massive. Most extended families have had an experience of cough syrup addiction, either by a boy or a girl or even a parent. So it's, it's beyond every imagination you could think of. Has anybody asked the obvious question in Nigeria? Where is all this syrup coming from? And how does it get on our streets? I suspected crooks inside Nigerian pharmaceutical companies might be secretly selling it to the underworld. But in order to prove this, I needed to work with the best. When it comes to digging out corruption in Nigeria, few are better than Adejuwon Shoyinka, the editor of BBC Pigeon. We began at the bottom of the food chain, meeting with dealers and cult gang members in Lagos. If we spoke to these criminals openly as journalists, we could have been killed. We needed to deploy secret filming equipment. I mean, that's the only way of being able to do this and remaining alive, actually. I had to create a new identity for myself and presented myself as a businessman who is really very greedy and, you know, is willing to go into any business that is able to bring in money. So we came up with the most despicable cover story for Adejuwon you can imagine. He pretended he was a businessman who wanted to buy large amounts of syrup to sell to students and children. Way, you know, um, coming towards you now. Going under the fake name Mr. Johnson, Adejuwon made his way through gang contacts, pushing for links to crooks in pharmaceutical companies aware everyone was suspicious of police agents. Eventually, we got our first big break. So, these early stages were very nerve-wracking. They were scary for every single member of the team. Sources gave us a tip-off about a major supplier to the black market, a pharmacist called Mr. Pascal. On the surface, he runs a normal pharmacy, but behind the scenes, he illegally sells cough syrup to gangs. He does this, we later found out, with the help of a corrupt employee working for Lagos-based Emzo Pharmaceuticals, one of the largest pharmaceutical companies in Nigeria. I was introduced to this guy by the guys in the underworld. They belong to a network, so I was worried, could they possibly spring a surprise? You know, but as it turned out, they were willing to do business. 
Anyway, it took a while to even encourage or convince the pharmacist that I actually meant business. He was basically asking probing questions, wanting to know who I was and where I came from and check out my claims to being a genuine businessman. I can go to the market and meet my I meet my Amazon distributor. I tell him I need on their cartons. We make it available for you. Or if you go, they can never they cannot even sell one carton to you. Because yeah. they don't know who you are. Everybody's being cautious. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. I wouldn't want something that would land me up in the police net or NDLA net or anything or any other day. Yeah. Eventually when he got convinced that actually meant business. Then he opened up and told me about how the business is uh, conducted and how he gets his own supplies from sales reps of pharmaceutical companies. Okay. I do this production. Okay. I do this production for Amazon. These products, I want to get them. It's going to be easy for me. I will submit the relationship between you and the reps okay. of the brands you want. Okay. I'll call them, they will come. So it takes products from pharmaceutical companies and then rather than sell with prescription, passes them on to the underworld where these things are sold openly on the streets to young boys who basically abuse it and get high on, on, on syrup with codeine. So that's what it does. Thank you very much. Eh? I appreciate your time. I will uh, expect your call later today. Or should I call you? What time should I call you? Um, I'll call you. What do you do? By the end of the meeting, Mr. Pascal agreed a deal. He would set up a meeting for us with a man from Emzo Pharmaceuticals who supplies the black market direct from the Emzo factory. And once that first break came, it became a waterfall. Unlike most street drugs, codeine cough syrup is produced on an industrial scale. Dozens of Nigerian companies legally manufacture it. It is not illegal to drink codeine, but it is to sell it to people without a doctor's prescription or a pharmaceutical license. Vast quantities are seized and destroyed by the government every year. Tons of it in northern Nigeria last year. But even this fire has hardly even cinched the illegal trade. In Lagos, Syrup's impact has become crazy. One pharmacy has been forced to turn into a fortress to defend itself against thirsty codeine addicts. So when we first opened the pharmacy, we did not have this particular bungler proof. We had just the security door. And over time, we had to install this because of the challenges we're having with security. Uh, people who come in for the syrups, amrobas, and the rest. So we had to install this. Mr. Ido stopped selling syrup in 2010, but this hasn't stopped addicts wanting their codeine fix from trying to attack his staff. Thank you. Hold on for a change. Yeah. Business is now done through security bars, and CCTV monitors everything. They just come, codeine, 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 or they code the code, 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 give me code. I'm like, ah, these guys, you are too young for this. You don't even know what you, you, you're taking. From Tokyo. Just down the road from Turmeric Pharmacy, we found guys openly drinking codeine syrup at a bar. Do these people actually know the negative effect, side effects of this product? What it will do to them psychologically, physiologically, you know, how it damages their organs and the rest. And I weep for this nation because they don't even know. They don't even know what they're doing. They don't even know what they're asking for. Codeine addiction could lead to a number of things. It could lead to almost every organ failure. People can have inflammation of the pancreas, pancreatitis. People could have liver damage. People could have kidney damage. You could have all kinds of damages. That is even in the long run. In the short run, 
people become schizophrenic, literally mad. The day after our first meeting with corrupt pharmacist Mr. Pascal, we met him again at a restaurant, and as promised, he brought with him an EMSO employee to discuss an illegal cough syrup deal. We could never have imagined who he would bring. Not a small-time factory worker, but a business development executive of EMSO Pharmaceuticals, Chukunoye Madubike, seen on the right. Despite knowing we had no license to buy codeine syrup and wanted to sell it to students, Madubike got straight to business. Normally, you are not the pharmacist. You don't have a pharmacy shop. I should be supposed to sell it. You understand? That's a sign. We are here for business. He has a deep knowledge of the distribution channel for pharmaceutical products, both official and the unofficial. And he also gave me a deeper understanding of why and into why cough syrup business is big business in the underworld. If you have one, one million cartons, I can fill it in the week. It's a problem that the, the, the demand is higher than even the production, higher than even the supply. They're telling me, look, this product is highly addictive, so you will make your money. You will make your money because you can mark up the price, and those who consume it, because they are hooked on this product, on coding, they have no choice but to buy a cough with coding from you at whatever price you have placed on it. and no more. They wouldn't mind dropping, giving you the key of this the biggest irony of this is that this meeting held on a Sunday. So this business executive of Enzo Pharmaceuticals, who is clearly making money, feeding on the back of the addictive nature of cough syrup with codeine, <laughs> came straight from church to hold this meeting with me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And I look forward to us doing very, very useful, good business. I said, nobody has ever met your business and We left that meeting with a deal sealed. Madubike agreed to sell us a carton of 60 bottles of cough syrup with codeine straight out of the Emzo factory. Coding cough syrup is personal to me. Showing you who is responsible for the coding addiction is my story too. Yeah, this is it. As a baby, this would have been early 80s. Very handsome child. Still handsome. And I still love him a lot. My brother, who is called C, has struggled with addiction. He didn't want to appear in this film, but has agreed I can tell his story. He has taught me what addiction can do. His troubles began a few years ago after our father, Godwin Agbroko, an investigative journalist like me, was assassinated. My family found out the terrible news in a phone call from my then newspaper editor. He said, when I can't lie to you, we have to go to press. And I just realized nobody has told you people. And I said, wait, wait. So, what's going on? And he said, your dad is dead. I'm not going to land. This is the first time I'm going to say it openly. Um, I felt relief. 
I felt relieved because we knew he was going to be killed for a long time. There were so many threats, so many. We had people follow us. Because of what he used to write. My father was killed for fighting injustice and it tore our family apart. I went the way of work and my brother went the way of drug addiction. Grief pushed him into a bad crowd as it does with many addicts I have met. So I was thinking, my dad was here. Would, we, would things be like this? But, you know, who's to say things wouldn't be like this, eh? Or still be like this. Once he fell into addiction, he quit school, disappearing for months. I found out he was using codeine syrup through messages on his Facebook page. Some journalists pursue stories for fun or for money. I'm pursuing cough syrup in anger, in rage, in love. I do it in memory of my father. I do it for the love of my brother. If I can stop just one family, one person from going through this, if one person can see what signs to look out for, then I think I would have done my job. Yeah. A few days after our first meeting with Emzo executive Madubike, he called and gave us a location for our cough syrup drug deal. A hotel on his turf in the Lagos suburb of Isolo. We booked a room at the hotel and drove there with a bag stuffed with cash to make the purchase. Adejuwon met Madubike in the bar. My brother Hannah, what's up? Oh, today, Charlie. I work. How's oh, no. nice everything? Well done, well done, well done. Good evening. And when I walked into that bar, he gave me the impression that he came alone. But I noticed that there were about five young men who sat in different corners of the bar and pretended like they didn't know him. But I got a sense when I walked in that there was a connection between all of them and I could sense that they were sizing me up. Yeah. Uh, bring it, and we just go upstairs together. Uh, you know, at every point, there was the fear that they may just have discovered who I really am, and maybe setting up a trap for me to just walk in and take me out, because these are boys who could be armed. This third, third floor, they go put me. The places where we had to do these deals in Isolo were at the bottom of the ladder. And understandably so, because that's where this type of criminal activity will thrive. That's where it's better protected. That's where the henchmen are. That's where the foot soldiers live. Sorry, that is my friend. Okay. Oscar. Okay. Oscar, this is my friend as well, and my business colleague too. Mr. Johnson. Hi. Oscar, how are you? Good to see you. Well, well, uh, Oscar, can you, can you help me bring the... The, the stuff. food or time? No. Take it, sir. Take it. Take it. A pack of emzolin codeine syrup was put on the table. That's it. OK. So this is two, four, six, six, ten. 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 I asked him, how do I know if what I was buying was fake? He brought out, you know, opened the carton by himself, brought out a bottle of emzolin, and showed me several signs that I could use to know if I was buying fake or not. Mm -hmm. OK. Now, this is the batch now. It's on the... When you look at it, this is L. OK. 974 W. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. 974 That's the number of it. Hmm? While he was saying all of that, you know, all that was going through my mind was 
How many lives have been ruined by cough syrup with codeine? The same product that this guy was selling to me, knowing full well that I was going to potentially distribute this to university students, to children who have been sent to school to learn. But hence I am used to you. You started from the oven. <laughs> it's a normal bed. It's a normal bed. <laughs> fresh. It's a normal bed. Fresh, fresh, fresh new bed. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. It's sealed. It's sealed with yeah, this. Yeah. Let me tell you one thing. This is like an addict. When somebody is addicted to something, she gets it. And he needs it. Your price, I don't think, is an issue. And when the person knows that he, he gets the best quality, he goes from him. Uh, Hmm. Yeah, I get the cash, Jerry. The fact that he knew that this was addictive, he actually told me himself about how addictive the product is. He had no qualms selling a carton of 60 bottles to me. It's my key. It's complete, are you? Is it? Yeah. After this meeting with this gentleman, it was clear to us that Ems of Amasikus is leaking cough syrup with codeine. You know, and it's leaking that directly to the underworld and fueling addiction on the streets of Nigeria. Go and do a sprint. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. You know, from one thing one thing about the business. Mm -hmm. I'm a core business person. You want something that will benefit him. Yeah. And at the same time, benefit you. You know. are working on trust. Yeah. And of course, he's been calling me ever since then. I mean, he started calling me four or five days after making that drop off because he wanted more money. Adejuwon poured the Emza syrup down into the Lagos sewer. We didn't want it to end up on the black market or in the hands of an addict. Emza Pharmaceuticals told us it's investigating Mr. Madu Bike adding he has access to a very limited amount of emzolin with codeine and could not possibly sell large quantities illegally. The company says it is a responsible and compliant business, is reviewing distribution policies and treating our findings with the utmost seriousness. Mr. Pascal and Stella Charles Pharmacy did not respond to us. This, that the evidence say people they sell codeine products without prescription. And as we don't gather this evidence now, our only hope is say, this is our wall and will be for nothing. Say government go wake up. Say pharmaceutical industry go wake up. Say pharmacists within Nigeria and all over Africa go wake up. And go make sure say this kind thing don't go to happen again. To make sure say young people know they get access to this kind thing for the street. Because now this kind of thing they destroy their life. Eleven hundred kilometers north of Lagos in Kano, the volume of cough syrup leaking out of pharmaceutical companies and onto the black market is clear. The head of the drug enforcement agency in the city, Commander Hamza Umar, showed me his storage rooms, where drugs seized from criminals are kept. But inside the main store where this exhibit are kept, right inside you can see. Wow. Inside the store is a mountain of drugs, cocaine, heroin, weed, but also thousands of bottles of cough syrup intended for the streets. It's hidden in rice sacks, bags, and even wedding gifts. Everything you see here, is coding. Everything, let me raise some of this glass. You can see the many. You can hear the sound of the bottles. You can hear the sound. You can hear the bottles, hear all the bottles is coding. If you like, you can look at the heavy ones, all is coding. You can see these ones, they are white. That's 25 all kilograms. is coding, but too heavy. It's more than that. Yeah. You can hear the way it sounds. All is coding. It wasn't just sacks. Some of the syrup looked as though it came straight out of the factory. Now here, you can see we have tons, tons, tons of it. 
Just one product? Just one product and seized from one person. One person had yes, this? Yes. The war against cough syrup in Kano is overwhelming. This thing is spraying like bushfire in a dry savannah. And we are seeing the red this thing is moving. I, I, we, are seeing, we are getting towards a hopeless society. And it costs all class, no matter the level, rich and poor, educated and illiterate, a beggar and a toddler. But this must be a very huge drain on your resources, on your oh, budget, and is. even on your it men. It is. And don't forget, this is what we are able to arrest. Hmm. We may not arrest 10%, considering our capacity, our logistics, and the men. And to take that 10% of syrup off Kano streets, Commander Hamza's men must risk their lives battling coding gangs. Some officers have even been killed. We raided a house and suddenly I just saw somebody with this dangerous weapon. What did he do? He tried to, like, as in, cut off my leg. But I was so lucky, it was only my flesh that he was able to remove. He sliced off your He's, flesh there? He, he, of course, yes. The array of weapons used by gangs dealing in syrup shocked me. It's like props from a Nollywood war film, except this is real. This chainsaw was recently even used to attack one of our officers. Hey! But before he could get to the person, one of our armed men took off his leg. Shot him? Yes. This is mostly used when they have overpowered you. Oh dear. In fact, they use this saw to make sure that they pieces you. Decapitate you. Exactly. But while you're alive. While you're alive. How do you feel when your men almost lose their lives trying to stop cough syrup from well, getting on the street? Sad, very terrible. It's seriously a hectic task. Stopping cough syrup? Yes, it is. It is seriously a hectic task. Almost all of the cough syrup I saw in the commander's storage rooms were produced by two companies. Peace Standard Pharmaceuticals and Bioraj. The city of Iloring in central Nigeria is the coding cough syrup capital of the country. Tons and tons is produced here every year. It's where the Peace Standard and Bioraj factories are based. We checked into a hotel remaining undercover throughout our stay, disguising ourselves as business people with cash in our suitcases, hungry to buy cough syrup from the black market. Syrup dealers were everywhere. We couldn't trust anyone. Sometimes you could get a sense that people were trying to eavesdrop on our conversation. You know, they were actually really after understanding who we were and what we were doing there and trying to get to know exactly what we came for. Peace Standard Pharmaceuticals has a large factory on the edge of Ilori. We got an invitation to meet with a senior figure at the company, superintendent pharmacist, Mr. Kamaldin Abu Said. It's a fairly big uh, premises. Mr. Abu Said had told us we should mention his name at the gate. And immediately we did that, it was like open sesame. We were ushered in. The superintendent pharmacist, Mr. Abu Said, had been called before government authorities just a few weeks before we arrived to explain why their codeine syrup was on the black market. We wondered, would he be willing to do a syrup deal with us? Morning. Morning. How are you today? Thank you. Oh, here. Yeah, okay. As soon as we mentioned cough syrup, he did not flinch. He did not waver. He did not betray any emotion, other than to lean forward and tell us to continue speaking. You know, some of my friends mentioned to me the fact that um, coding business is doing well. 
but there's a caveat, as we both know. Um, I would require some form of permit to be able to sell or even take products, you know, which I do not have, and which I believe I cannot possibly get because I'm not a certified pharmacist. But I'm hoping that I can get products. And actually my target market in open state is students. Because I hear that these products move a lot among, um, among students. The longer and short of it is that I'm ready to do business with you, like you said. Although I must also state that that product is a very scarce product. Instead of throwing us out of his office, Abu Said was prepared to do business, but only if a smokescreen was in place. I'm not supposed, you know, I'm meeting you for the first time, yeah. but I feel I should open up some things to you mm. to tell you the, the um, nitty gritty. For example, in your own case now, if, if uh, on a normal platform, if I want to release it to you, you must have a pharmacist fronting for you. Okay. Do you get that yeah. will front for you when you need to collect such things? Maybe you have a, a business agreement with them. So you will now have a supply. You will now supply through to that pharmacy. Supplying a pharmacy outlet is legal, but supplying that outlet in the full knowledge it is a front for black market buyers is not. We outlined the plan again just to be sure this was what Mr. Abu Said was advising. Suppose we start by, say, attaching ourselves to, to a pharmacy, to a pharmacy outlet, yeah, yes. that is already so able to take products yes. from you yes. and just with the purpose of in smoke screen to have other products in and, and then have the coding product that, that is primarily our target. Can we go through that process? You can now. That's why that's what I'm advising you. Mm. Here is a pharmacist, respected, senior, known in the industry, contributed to academic journals, and he was teaching me how to beat the system, how to subvert the system. P. Standard told us Mr. Abu Said did not teach us to subvert the system or advise setting up a front. It said the company does not supply syrup with coding illegally and only supplies accredited outlets. With syrup finding its way out of pharmaceutical companies and onto our streets, it's no surprise we have millions of addicts in this country. Some of them end up in government rehabilitation centers alongside people with mental illness. I visited this one in Kano. It's one of a dozen in the state. It's a place of nightmares. This cough syrup addict was found out of control in the city arrested and brought into the center a few days before. He's He's screaming. He's still, he's still in withdrawal syndrome now. He's still having his withdrawal issue now. Staff chained him to a tree. He was too violent to be close to others. This is what cough syrup does. This can be anyone's brother. Yeah, of course. Can be anyone's husband. Yeah, exactly, exactly. This can be anyone's family member. And so the only way to stop it is for people to stop selling this thing exactly. to people. Exactly. They need to stop selling it. The rehab center does not have the funds to deal with the number of syrup patients it receives. Addicts are often chained to the floor. Overuse of codeine affects the brain, 
causes insanity in some cases and some addicts become violent. They will stay like this for weeks, swarming with flies. No books, no television, nothing. And still, they keep coming. As I'm talking to you, it's alarming. For every week that passes, before we could get maybe two or three within a week, but now we six, seven, eight, sometimes even ten within a week. Many of the cough syrup addicts are suffering, shivering and unstable with withdrawal symptoms. I spoke to a young man chained to the floor. We agreed to hide faces out of respect. In one room, we found a girl of just 16 years. She's been in the center two months, feeling weak and still shaking as the syrup leaves her system. Her message to others is simple. It really breaks my heart to see children like this and see young men like this, honestly. It's really, really bad. And everybody knows the situation of this codeine now. It's not a hidden thing. We can't lie to ourselves and we can't deceive anybody. The truth should be told. And we are saying it out that this thing is a serious issue. It is biting everybody. It is going from one home to another. If you think you are safe, you are not safe. Just before I left the rehab center, a boy was brought in, having been found on the street. He was delirious and soon became unconscious. Doctors struggled to find a vein to revive him with a drip. Three days later, this boy was dead. And Sani couldn't rule out cough syrup abuse, although we'll never know for sure. What is sure, Sani later told us, is that this is what cough syrup can do. As I left this place, I understood why some people say cough syrup is killing a generation. My worst nightmare is to imagine my brother in a place like this. Further south in Inloring, our investigation took a new turn when we set our sights on Bioraj, the company whose boxes of Baolin syrup were stacked in the NDLEA store in Kano. Sources had told us the factory was leaking huge amounts of syrup. At day one placed a call to a Bioraj sales representative and told him we wanted to buy cough syrup without papers. He immediately set up a meeting. So on Sunday morning, I went to the factory as agreed, and it turned out that I was not only meeting the sales rep, he had also set up a meeting with the store manager of Barrad. Adejuwon met the sales representative, Al Mansuru, first. He came out of the factory and greeted him in front of the gates. What was so crazy about the Barrage filming was we were invited into the premises of the company to buy, purchase, and take away cough syrup. We didn't have to sneak into this company. We were literally welcomed into the company to come and buy cough syrup without papers. Yes. 
This is battery now. This is battery, not the. Oh, I. It's not stop. So it's battery. Yes, sir. It will be need 500. You don't have much. Better. 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 I thought I was going to impress them by saying, well, I wanted to buy like five cartons to start with and test the market. So when I said five cartons, this tall manager looked at me and smiled. <laughs> I said, well, that he, he could understand that I wanted to start small. So otherwise, if I wanted a thousand cartons of Baolin, they could give it to me. So, but even the large quantity, because we only in the Yibo I'm going to be a 1,000 cartons. Are you not joking? Yes. Yes. Um, so I'm, I'm telling you to use the fast. So the that literally blew me off my feet. So one individual take a, takes a shipment, a delivery of how many bottles is that? About 60,000 bottles of cough syrup with codeine of Baura factory in one deal, just one single deal. And you know what? They also told me that these individuals exhaust this product in about a month and they are back for another delivery. How is it that pharmaceutical companies can have individuals in there that let out this huge amount of cough syrup straight into the black market. It's, it's quite hard to be able to understand how this leaves the companies and no one is vetting, no one is checking. And then it was time for us to pay for the syrup. 43, are we? 43, 200. So I just need to make sure. So she she we have the invoice at the receipt. <laughs> <laughs> How many people are talking about it? What is government doing? Has anybody been convicted? I mean, these drugs are not coming from the moon. They're not coming from under the sea. They are manufactured somewhere. They're transported from one place to the other. Are we saying that we don't know? Come on. They brought out a carton of 60 bottles of syrup for us and took off the label to cover their crime. Nice to meet you. In a Baoraj statement, both Baba Ibeji and Mr. Al Mansuru deny selling Baolin illegally. The company told us Mr. Al Mansuru actually left them in 2016. Baoraj chairman Bioku Rahamon said the company only sells coding cough syrup legitimately and he personally guards sales of Baolin. So they make this much money selling addictive cough syrup with codeine to people. And you know the irony of it? Their motto says, 
your health is our concern. Rather very sadly ironic. Nigeria's President Muhammadu Buhari has publicly expressed his concern over my country's cough syrup epidemic. A special government committee was set up last October to address it. But why has nobody asked the hard questions? Are companies that make cough syrup responsible for our codeine addicts? Are government regulators monitoring these companies properly? What are they monitoring? What are they following? I don't know. There are just too many unanswered questions. There are just too many unanswered questions why people don't do their own jobs. There are just too many unanswered questions. It's so sad. Every time I talk about it, I really get angry. I really get angry on the verge of crying. We destroyed all the violin we bought. Every drop of it went down the drain. It's so thick. Oh, this is disgusting. Nyama. Ugh. I think we've done what the job we're supposed to do as journalists. If one person can be saved from getting deeper into their habits or starting a coding habit, yeah, then uh, our job is done. Yeah.